prodigal son. One day he said to his father, Father, give me everything that belongs to me. Let me go wander around and see what else this world care about. world is promising. His father was a gentleman. He gave everything else. And he knew that he will uh, learn, a, uh, learn a, a lesson and will come back. Sometimes your parents may be just losing you for a time, you know. And they know that you will come back. You will come back. You should come back. Amen. You must come back. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning. Remember, bear in mind that I am not uh, 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 giving you this message with the assumption that you have fallen in sin. No, I don't think that at all. I, I have, even today, I have uh, the integrity and courage to say that my young men and women are far, far better. Still, as a pastor, I have to remind you that there is possibility. Come, come, come. Come. Stop sinning. For there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. So what do you, we are supposed to do when you are choosing friends? Be careful that what kind of friends you have. Can you share your faith with them? Are you attracting them to your faith or vice versa? Think about that. So 2 Corinthians chapter 6. You all need to read that portion. Not right now. When uh, the, the, the <coughs> moment you reach home, I just want to encourage all of you to turn. Uh, for 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 14 and, and following verses. 14 through. You should, uh, you should read that. And, and uh, try to uh, memorize those verses. See, do not be yoked. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. Do not be yoked. That doesn't mean that in your workplace you have, you sometimes will have, when I came to this country, I worked for a couple of months, you know, and the person who was working next to me was a same, you know, I don't want to uh, fill out the, the rest, he was the same. I was, you know, <laughs> I thought, that, where am I? How can I work with this guy? He's very evil, you know. But still I had to work because I, 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 I must live. You know, deal with your, uh, you know, a fellow worker, friends uh, or you know some sort of interaction with person who is not born again at all but when you are making a deep commitment with that person when you are choosing one person to this guy is or this girl is the, is the right person that I can make friendship with you have to be careful why Apostle Paul warned us that do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have with darkness you do not belong to dark, you know, you are the light of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and his uh, light is shining upon us. So you are supposed to be light to this world. You have nothing to do with darkness. You are far away, you are on the other side. You are just opposite of that. Just opposite of that. Flee, follow, fight, fight. Fight a good fight. A good fight of faith. Paul said that I am fighting to myself. I am fighting to myself, you know. Then only I can defeat my flesh. Never ever my, uh, you know, a flesh overtake my spirit. So what I am doing? Fighting myself. There is such a struggle going on within me. Now I beat my body, you know. I'm not, you know, cherishing all the desires of my body. It's a longing for so many things, especially when you are uh, you, you are an youngster. It will long for so many things. I want to enjoy that. I need to know what that is. Oh, my friends go for that. No. Now I beat my body and make it my slave. Make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, it's very important. After I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. For the price. So you need to fight, you know. That's why Apostle Paul said, I have fought a good fight. And I have finished my race. I have finished my race. Amen. And when Paul writes to, hopefully, Paul writes to uh, the Hebrew Christian, he says, you know, in your struggle against sin, in your struggle against sin, you know, the struggle is going on, it's within you. One side of the, of, of, of the conscience say that, okay, let us go for that. They all go. 
No, the other side, the spirit tells you, no, that struggle is going on. What you are supposed to do in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. If you have to give your life for your faith, for purity, you have to have the willingness to do that. Because you are supposed to please God. Honor God with your body. Honor God with your spirit. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Your <coughs> body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there is good news. You can. First John chapter 2 verse 14. I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men, which means I write to you young women, <coughs> because you are strong. You have the fear more than conquerors. You have the power to defeat the enemy. You have the power to overcome sin. No matter how great the temptation is, young men, you are strong. How are you? Uh, how, how, how do you become strong? I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you. How do you keep your life pure? How does that happen? The Holy Spirit can sanctify you. The word of God can sanctify you. Your prayer life can sanctify you. Could you not tidy one hour with me? That was the question Jesus posed to his disciple Peter. How many of you do spend at least 10 minutes to pray? 10 minutes to pray. I want to challenge the parents. How many minutes you spend to pray and bless for your children? Amen. Half an hour every day. Take half an hour to pray and bless your children so that they will be in the right path. You know, Amen. children of tears, children of prayer will never perish. They are all examples. Amen. Children, don't think that when you are living in India, there is no possibility for you to sin. Sin is the same everywhere else. And possibility is almost the same. Here you have more freedom when you are after 18 years. But we all did have opportunity to sin. But we said no. Amen. We said no. And the word of God lives in you. And you have overcome the evil. Amen. There is an old saying that goes like this. <clears throat> It isn't the mountain ahead that wears you out. It's the grain of sand in your shoe. Many a man worried for fear he would not be able to cross a mountain has had to stop some miles before he crossed the foothills because he had not taken time to clean out his shoes. Just small signs that are in your shoes can fail you. Small things, not big things. <coughs> you are overcoming big things, but what are those small little things that can <coughs> hinder your progress, block your progress? That has been the source of failure in many Christians' life. Eager to avoid the big sins, your life may outward, outwardly be one of extreme piety, but if there are hidden imperfections, Little pebbles in your shoe, these will cause failure in your Christian life. It's not always big sins that you that can fail you, but little things that you usually ignore can hinder your spiritual growth. Let us take a decision. This is the second Sunday of 2010. Children, I would like to encourage you to take a decision. That no matter what happens to me, I will not commit sin. I will not associate with evil people. I'm not supposed to yoke with un unbelievers. It's uh, written in the in the in the uh, King James version. I think that unequally yoked with unbelievers. You are not supposed to make friendship with those people. Follow a lifestyle that will match to the lifestyle lifestyle of people who will go through that narrow gate. Amen. I will choose a lifestyle that I can bear more fruits. And certainly I will be a wise builder, not otherwise. I will be a wise builder in the days to come. Take time to pray and meditate.